Hello. So today I'm going to be talking about 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I don't know why it's taken me so long to get round to reading this book. In fact, I've heard so much about it over the years, I feel like I have read it. Now, I don't tend to read what you would call the classics. It's all down to my school teachers being absolutely awful and pretty much destroying classic literature for me. In fact, it's not until I discovered contemporary fiction that I actually started enjoying reading. However, it was my New Year's resolution to read more classics, so I'm striving this year to read at least three, and I've decided to start with this one. I've got to admit, I was a little nervous when I started reading this one. I told a friend and work colleague that I was going to be reading this, and they told me it was their favourite book ever. Now, he is one of, if not the smartest person I've ever met, although he would absolutely hate me saying that, but he's incredibly well-read, he oversees PhD students, he's insanely well-versed in Romanticism, post-structuralism, post-modernism, He's a very smart guy, and he mentioned to me that he watches my reviews. And on top of all that, he taught me at university in 2003. So setting up this camera and embarking on this review very much felt like I was stepping back in time and about to hand in an essay. But putting all that aside, let's talk about 100 Years of Solitude. I'm going to try and keep this review as spoiler-free as possible, but I am going to be mentioning certain aspects of it. So, you've been warned. I have also always been terrible at languages, I mean absolutely awful, yet I love foreign fiction. I know, I'm cursed. So therefore I can guarantee I'm going to mispronounce some of the names and some of the places in this book. But please don't hate me too much for absolutely murdering the Spanish language. First published in 1967 and then published in English for the first time in 1970, set in Colombia, 100 Years of Solitude spans 100 years of the Buendia family. So epic is the family lineage in this story that the included family tree is an absolute must. Covering themes of family, solitude and fatalism, the Buendia family are haunted both metaphorically and physically by the ghosts of their past, unable to escape the inevitable repetition of history. To the best of my knowledge, this novel pays paved the way for what we term magical realism, or it invented it. I'm not too sure. Now, the parameters of magical realism have become a little bit skewed over the years, but in essence, magical realism employs fantastical, paranormal, or magical elements into an otherwise realistically written world. Now, this novel comes at you at breakneck speed, and it does not let up. So you either jump on board, or you just simply get lost in the sheer amount of information it throws at you. Names. So many names. So many, 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 many names. And to make things even harder, the Bundia family keep naming their children after their ancestors, so it becomes even harder to keep on top of who's who. But the repetition of names does solidify the fact that the Bundia family is doomed to repeat themselves in a solitude of their own making. Story-wise, we open around 1820 with the patriarch of the family, Jose, and his wife, Ursula. They are leaving their hometown for greener pastures and they travel through the jungle. They then find a spot upon a lake and Jose decides this is where he is going to build his utopia and he calls it Macondo. And what follows is their story, covering political uprisings, religion, plagues, the industrial revolution, wars and rebellion. And within the family we have incest, cross-generational incest, marriages, deaths, so much is going on. But other than that rough little hint of what happens within this novel, Without going into spoilers, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I could talk about this book for hours, about all the small little details, about what this book is trying to say politically, about society and the world we live within. But I would be here for a long time, and I try to keep my reviews under 10 minutes. I can tell you that this book is insanely dense. It is packed and overloaded with information. There is a lot of history within this, and there is a lot of poetry. And I imagine it is pointing out or highlighting philosophical musings about the world that I am simply just missing because it is overloaded. Which just means it is begging to be reread, and I'll probably discover a hundred new things about it upon a reread. There's just so much packed into its 422 pages. So, what did I think about it? I bloody loved it. I love the style of the prose, which is really blunt and matter-of-fact, but it really solidifies the more magical elements of the story. That blunt and matter-of-fact nature enables those fantastical elements to feel real, to feel like they are a part of this world. It's never jarring against the rest of the information, it just slots right in there. I loved the creativity and imagination Gabriela Garcia Marquez threw into this book. I really don't have anything bad to say about it. However, as an English speaker with very, very little knowledge of Spanish, I did find keeping up with the Spanish names incredibly hard. It took 
a lot of work on my part. And I think this book in general requires a lot of work from its reader. I imagine a lot of readers like myself who struggle with the Spanish language would probably switch off quite early from this as well. But please, trust me, stick with it, work through it. It's so worth it. It is one wild and poetic ride. I think I'm going to leave that there. There's a lot more I could talk about. The way he captures the world. How you wish you were living there. How you feel like you were a part of this family. How you feel like you were growing with this family through their trials and tribulations. Uh, Gabriela Garcia Marquez does just a fantastic job of bringing you into this world. Of going on this absolutely epic journey. I loved every minute of it. I really enjoyed it. It Proper Wanderlust. I just got lost in the magic of this. Uh, yeah, great. Five stars, without a doubt, five stars. I'm glad I started my classics journey with this book and I'm actually starting to realise that maybe I'm now at the age where I can really start getting something and appreciating the more classical works of fiction. Have you read 100 Years of Solitude? And if so, what did you think about it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And my question of the review is this. What is one or some of your favourite books of magical realism? What books do you think just get the genre right? It's not gimmicky. They beautifully infuse the magical realism into the kind of reality of the fiction they've created. I'm really intrigued as I'd like to read a little bit more in this area. Thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll see you all on the next one.